Chris Belfry from BelfryWellness.com. I'm a human potentialist because I see the potential in each and every one of you. Today I want to talk a little quick thing about our beliefs and how they relate to our food and um, and really kind of put a little, get you to kind of think. There was a movie maybe oh, what, 10, 12 years ago called Super Size Me. Many of you have probably seen it and um, after watching it, we're disgusted by McDonald's. So the premise of the movie was um, there was a gentleman and he was going to eat McDonald's every day for 30 days and see how he felt at the end of those 30 days. And after those 30 days, um, he was extremely sick. He ate McDonald's every day for those 30 days and halfway through even he started to really start feeling the effects of eating at McDonald's every day. And um, so I watched that movie because it was really hyped and it really put a whole skew onto McDonald's and how, you know, crappy and shitty that food food is that, you know, people shouldn't eat there and they're going to die. And the person, of the, the person who did the documentary, I probably believe that theory too, because during those three days and he really started to feel the effects of this food. So I watched that movie, and like many of you probably did, but I watch it for, you know, um, to things that make sense. And what they did was they interviewed a guy, and his name was uh, Don Gorski. And that gentleman, I think at the time, had had like um, 10 or 15,000 Big Macs in his lifetime. So they interviewed this guy, and, and in 1972, if you listen to his story, um, he started eat, eating Big Macs in 1962, or 1972 because he was waiting for his license to drive to the nearest town so he can have that first McDonald's because he was looking forward to it. So there was a lot of love and excitement around getting this first Big Mac. And after that, he fell in love and he, to that day, he's had at least, you know, on average, two or more Big Macs every day up until this movie. And they interviewed this guy. And you look at this guy and, you know, he's maybe in his, I don't know, he would have been in his 40s. Uh, into time or 50s or late 40s and he was an average build he wasn't obese he wasn't sick he didn't look dead and he had been eating them for like what 30 years so I just thought like ah, how's that even possible this guy has been eating them for 30 years totally fine normal this guy's been 20 days and he's ready to keel over so it really got me to think like how's that even possible is it is it really the food or is it really how we think so I started to really investigate but I want to wrap that up. So last year, that Don Gorski had his 30,000 Big Mac. He's a record holder for having eaten the most Big Macs. He's still alive today, and he's still eating Big Macs, two to three Big Macs per day, every day. So to think it's really the food or how we think of the food is really the question. Because if you've ever traveled and gone to Europe, people in France, they eat a lot of baked goods, they eat a lot of rich uh, rich foods, they love their pastries, they love their desserts. And they're not walking around obese and you know overweight and deathly ill. If you go to Italy down there, you know, go down a little bit, you go to Italy, they're full of pasta, they eat their pasta, they eat their lasagna and their pizza. And are they dying? Are they being sick? Do they have all these digestional issues that we have here in North America? So is it really necessarily the food that we eat or how we think about the food or maybe how we prepare it? A lot of us have to speed through the meals to get through dinner to take the kids to a ball game or a hockey game. And really there it's about loving the, the, the you know, maybe the mother, the parents come together, the grandparents cook the meal with love and they sit down and eat and enjoy the meal. So I really want you to think about is it really the food? And I'm not saying you have to go and you can eat Big Macs every day because you got to really believe that they're okay for you. And if you don't, you know, you got to, you know, listen to some of the stuff I've been talking about and start to become more mindful. And the more you become more mindful of what you're eating, you're going to start eating more healthier foods. But if you eat it, decide to go, hey, I'm going to have Big Mac because I'm choosing to. And knowing that it's not going to go right to my behind like we've already discussed or it's not going to clog my arteries instantly I'm going to die or if you want to have that piece of chocolate you can have that piece of chocolate without you know all these consequences we're told that these foods are are killing you it's kind of like smoking you know people um who started smoking back when smoking first came and this is an advertising to smoke but it's just to kind of get you thinking how many of our like grandparents or great grandparents have smoked? They start smoking when they're 10 or 12 and you know, 
Um, people smoked all the time. Doctors encouraged smoking in the 70s. So it was popular and they say, oh, you got to smoke. So a lot of those people are 90, 100 years old, still smoking, and um, they're not even close to dying. Whereas people, you know, at my age and, and a little bit older started smoking, you can't buy a package of cigarettes that don't say, you know, smoking is going to kill you or some derivative of that. And you see that every day, again, you're just constantly in your consciousness, subconscious, like I'm doing something that's killing me. And you're putting that in your mouth every single day. So I'm not saying you got to smoke or smoking is, is healthy, but you got to look at it as how much is it, how much I believe or, or how much is it real, right? You know, from a simple spec, there was a uh, biology of belief. And I think I've shared this before is, um, in that, in that book by, uh, in that book, the, there was an, uh, an ancient tribe where the, they believe that the older you are, the faster you can run. So a 40 year old can outrun an 18 year old, a 60 year old can out, outrun a 30 year old. Why? Because that was the belief system. And you think, we think like, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's totally the opposite here. Right? But that was a belief system. Similarly, you know, um, um, Richard Bandler, who first, you know, ran that uh, the four minute mile, no one had done it. He believed he could and he did. Once he did, I think it was like nine, 17 or 19 people within that year then beat that record or went ran under that one minute mile. So really, again, just think, how much is it upstairs? Take care. We'll talk again soon. Bye for now.